welcome you all to the new session of computer graphics today we will be learning about output primitives now let me tell you what this primitive is primitive means basic like suppose if i want to display a text so to display a text the elements used in the text are characters so many characters are combined together to form a text so character is the basic element used to create the text similarly if i want to create some shapes or if i want to draw pictures to draw pictures the basic elements i am using is line circle rectangles and curves okay so all these basic elements are used to draw a picture similarly many characters are combined together to write a text similarly these basic elements are called primitives so what is output primitive many basic elements can be used to produce an output this is called output primitives okay so in first section of output primitives we will be learning about a line line is a primitive that can be used to draw pictures in this we will be learning various attributes of line various attributes of line what is meant by attribute attribute means properties so i am going to teach you different properties of a line clear so what are they first property is color i can draw line using various colors okay so every line will be having a color of its own i can draw a black line color i i can draw a black line i can draw a red line so i can draw lines with different colors so color is one of the property of line second property or attribute of line is width width means i can draw lines with various thickness i can draw a thin line or i can draw a line with thick thickness increase the thickness so thickness of the line is uh, defined using the term width okay so i can either increase the width of the line or i can reduce the width of the line the third attribute of the line is type there are various types of line let me teach you four different types the first one is a solid line a normal line which is drawn continuously is called a solid line second one is a dotted line if i am trying to draw a line using a sequence of dots it is called a dotted line third one is a dashed line again i am going to draw a line with a sequence of dashes it is called a dashed line fourth one is dashed dotted that means i am drawing a line using two elements one is a dash one is a dot so alternatively using dash and dot first i used used a dash then i used a dot again i used a dash then i used a dot so using dash and dot alternatively to draw a line is called a dash the dotted line so there are four different types of line that can be used in graphics okay so every line will be having these three attributes attributes are the properties used to describe a object okay so line is having three different attributes a color width and the third one is type so this is all about attributes of line now let me teach you line capping methods what is line capping method this is a raster scan system suppose i am going to draw a line on the screen as you already know that when you try to draw pictures on a raster scan system staircase appearance will occur due to which clarity of the picture is reduced very much and to improve the clarity to reduce the aliasing we use various anti aliasing methods now what is this capping capping means some sort of techniques are applied at the ends 
while displaying objects or while displaying line on the raster scan system you will get irregular ends i'm not talking about the whole line i am just talking about the end positions okay those ends are irregular they are not a perfect ends while drawing lines on the system to correct irregular ends we use line capping methods see this end portion is having irregularity and this end portion is also having irregularity so to correct the irregularities at the end points of a line we use line capping methods so there are three different methods used in line capping first one is butt cap let me teach you what a butt cap is suppose this is a thick line whose ends are irregular the ends of the thick line are irregular now to correct the irregularities at the end of a thick line if i am drawing parallel lines a parallel line is drawn at both the ends one parallel line here and another parallel line here i am using a set of parallel lines at both ends of this thick line to correct the irregular ends then it is called a butt cap instead of parallel lines if i am using a semi circle one semi circle here and another semi circle here and both these semi circles are filled semi circles so if i am using filled semi circles at both ends to correct irregularities at the line ends then it is called a round cap and the third one instead of parallel lines or filled semi circles if i am using a projected square a projected square is used at both the ends to correct the irregularities at the end positions of a thick line then it is called a projecting square cap so there are three different methods of correcting the irregular ends of a line when you try to uh, plot the line on a raster scan system okay so those three methods are butt cap method round cap method and projecting square cap method okay now we will be learning about line joining methods suppose these are two thick lines two thick lines and these two lines are joined at this point but they do not appear to be a perfectly joined lines so to make two thick lines join perfectly to join two lines in a perfect manner we use line joining methods so we will be learning three different methods to join lines first one is round join let me teach you how see as i said these are two thick lines which is already joined at this point now round join says that you can place a um, semi circle filled semi circle at this point if you are placing a filled semi circle at this point to join these two thick lines and this filled semi circle is used then the joining method will be known as round join second method is instead of using a filled semi circle i can extend the boundary of first thick line and at the same time extend the boundary of second thick line so by extending the boundaries outer boundaries of both the lines until they meet like this i am extending first line's boundary and also extending the second line's boundary both these both these lines are extended until they meet so if in this way i am extending the boundaries and making them meet at a point it is called meter join clear and the third one is bevel join bevel join bevel join means i am placing a projecting square a projecting square is placed at the end of the thick lines like this either i can place a 
filled semicircle it becomes a round joint i can extend the outer boundaries of two thick lines and make them meet at a point it will become meter joint or i can use a projecting square a projecting square at the end then it will become bevel joint so there are three types of line joining methods round joint meter joint and bevel joint so this is all about the primitive line so we have learned about the line attributes line capping methods and line joining methods now the second primitive we are going to learn is character we are going to learn about character okay so first we will be learning about character attributes let me tell you one thing when you type text when you type a text this text is having number of characters in it like this this is a word attribute and this word is having number of characters in it and when you type a text on a computer screen or on a mobile screen what happens every character in the text is enclosed within a rectangular box what did i say when you type a text every character in the text is enclosed within a rectangular box that rectangular box is called character body clear so every character has its own character body in a character body only one character can be placed so depending on how many characters you have every character will have its own separate character body clear you know what is a character body now every character is enclosed within a rectangular box and that rectangular box is called its character body okay now let us learn four different properties of this character body the portion where the character body begins that means the upper portion of the character body is called top and the lower portion of the character body is called bottom okay so height of the character body is from top to bottom inside the character body the portion where the character begins so this is the portion where the character begins this is called a cap okay cap is the portion or the position inside the character body where the character begins what did i say cap is the position inside the character body where the character begins so this is the position where the character begins and this is the position where the character ends character begins at position cap and character ends at position base so there are two heights the height of the character body is from top to bottom and inside the character body the height of the character is from cap to base okay height of the character is from cap to base okay the four important attributes of character let us examine different character which is f we have already examined the character h now let me tell you about one more character f now what is the difference between these two characters do you find any difference when i was talking about h the entire portion of this character was exclusively inside the character body itself clear that means when you closely observe the character h every portion of this letter is exactly inside the character body but when you observe this character you can see that some portion of this character projects outside the character body so there are two types of characters some characters will be exactly inside the character body and none of the portions will be projecting outside like h but some other characters will be having a portion of the character will be projecting outside the character body okay and that portion which lies or which projects outside the character body is called a kern so what is a kern kern is the portion of the character which 
projects outside the character body and such characters are called kerned characters all those characters which have a kern is called kerned character so f is a kerned character because it is having a kern h is not a kerned character because it is not having any kerns clear when you display letters like g or j or y all these characters will have kerns and some portions of these characters will project outside the character body only those characters are called kerned characters okay now all other things are same the portion where the character body begins is called top and the portion where character body ends is called bottom the position where inside the character body the, uh, the position where the character begins is called cap and the position where the character ends inside the character body is called base top to bottom is the height of character body and cap to base is the height of character okay only difference is that uh, it is having a kern a projected part which projects outside the character body so this is all about the different attributes of a character let me move on to the next one let us learn about text attributes what are the different attributes a text can have the first attribute is color that means we can display text in different colors okay so this is one property of the text it can be displayed using various colors second attribute of text is direction direction i can either display a text in horizontal direction that means in this fashion or i can also display a text in a vertical fashion like this okay so there are two directions in which a text can be displayed either a text can be displayed in a horizontal direction or a text can be displayed in a vertical direction so two directions are there so color is an attribute direction is second attribute of text move on to the third attribute alignment there are three different alignments of the text okay if this is a cell you can either begin the text at this position if the text begins at extreme left we can say it is left aligned if the text a text is uh, right aligned then the text will begin at this position so text can either be left aligned or right aligned third one is center alignment that means you can type anything and it it will appear just in the center of the cell okay so three different alignments are there texts can either be aligned to the extreme left or extreme right or at the center okay so three different alignments are possible for the text next comes format you can easily format the text how by simply typing the text you can select it and make it bold you can appear you can make it appear bold or you can display the text in italics then the characters will be uh, slight uh, will be displayed in a, with a slant every character will be displayed in a slanting way then you can display the letters or the uh, text in italics format so you can display it in bold you can display it in italics or you can also give underlines if you are typing some headings or all you can just give a underline to that text clear so these are the different formattings you can apply to a text next comes the size when we talk about the size of the text the first one is height you can increase the height of the text like this you can increase the height of the text or you can decrease the height of the text what about the width this is the width you can display a text with more width or you can display the text with normal width what about space you can display text like this or you can display text like this 
so inputting space between the characters if there is no space they will be conjected but if there is space between them they will be more relaxed so you can increase or decrease space within the characters so it is possible to increase and decrease height of characters it is possible to increase and decrease the width of the character it is possible to in, uh, increase or decrease the space within the characters so all these three contribute to the size of text next comes the font of text text font there are two types of text fonts one is serif font and the second one is sans serif font two types of fonts are there you might have seen when you display some characters if it is having a small line at the end small line at the ends of the characters these are these small lines at the ends of the characters are called accents accents if characters have accents then font is called serif font but while displaying characters if it is not having any accents then the font is called sans serif font so two types of fonts are there one is serif font another one is sans serif so different attributes of text are text will text can be having many colors text can have more than one directions text can have more than one alignments can have different formattings various size and various fonts so these are all the various attributes of text now comes the last primitive which is curve attributes of curve so this is a simple curve attributes of curve are familiar to us these are the same attributes we learned for the line every curve can be drawn using different colors i can have a red curve i can draw the curve using blue color or a red color or a yellow color so any color can be used to draw the curve so color is one of the attribute of the curve second is curve type as we learned for line curves can also be drawn using solid curves dashed curves like this i can draw a curves using various dashes or i can draw a curve using various dots or i can draw a curve using dash and dot so four different types of curves are also possible now the third attribute is width width means i can either increase the width of the curve or i can draw a normal curve that means thick or thin curves can be drawn it is possible to either increase or decrease the curve width okay so three attributes are there for the curve one is color second one is type third one is width so today we have learned um, line attributes uh, line capping methods line joining methods character attributes text attributes and finally the curve attributes so i hope all the concepts are clear to you thank you